This week on Nikon's Birding Adventures TV, we're in Colombia, one of the most biodiverse regions in the world. And in particular on this show, we're going to be on the Western Andes in a place called Cali, a beautiful town called Cali. We're going to be birding the surrounds of Cali and also the Coca Valley. But in particular, we're going in quest of one bird, the greyish piculette. Let's go birding. No other country on earth holds more bird species than Colombia. With approximately 1900 different birds, Colombia is home to an astonishing 20% of all avian life on the planet. The culture, food and scenery, combined with some of the best birding in the world, make for a truly unforgettable experience. Here I am in the beautiful city of Cali, next to Colombia Avenue, one of the busiest streets in the city. And next to me here is the Cali River. And yet right here in the heart of this bustling metropolis, the city and the zoo have made a great effort here to educate their local residents to the birds around them. They've got these beautiful pillars here, a great walkway next to the river, where you can see all these really special birds from Colombia right here next to the river and in the surrounding areas. It's obvious from this situation that I'm not in the wilds right now, but I'm in the Cali Zoo and this happens to be a very, very good birding site within the city. It's got some very, very good vegetation and very good habitat around the zoo and you can walk around here and find some great Colombian endemics and speciality birds right here in the city. There are over 700 species of amphibians in Colombia. This place is not just for the birds, and over 70% of these amphibians are endemic to Colombia. They're found nowhere else in the world. This little beauty that I'm holding right now is a golden poison dart frog, and it is said by many to be the most poisonous vertebrate in the world. One of these frogs can kill 10 people. That's why I've got the gloves on, but this little sucker is a dangerous little beauty from the country of Colombia. Luis, nice to meet you. James Curry. Hi, how are you? Nice meeting you. Yes, this is the home of Luis Mazariegos and this place is hummingbird heaven. This house is legendary for the numbers of hummingbirds. Luis, show us what you've got here. Okay, follow me. That's great. Lots of heliconias, huh? Yep. And you chose the perfect day with uh, little rain, and that makes it even more exciting for hummingbirds to visit. Oh, great. So you've got a whole lot of people here already looking at the birds. Oh, wow. Look at your feeders. Yep. So Jeez. the feeders, I mean, uh, we go through, right now, 60 liters of sugar water a day, that's about uh, 15 kilos or 30 pounds a day. 60 liters yep. of sugar water a day. How much sugar do you go through a month? How many uh, bags? Oh, at least uh, 200 kilos, uh, 450 kilo bags, the least. Wow, 200 kilograms of sugar a month. This man puts out for hummingbirds. This has been a love of yours for, for a long time? Uh, a long time, since I was about uh, 15 years. So I'm just turned 50, so it's been 35 years. Tell us what your list is for your garden. How many species have you seen here? Well, here you can see 11 species, but commonly you can see six or seven. The other ones are basically birds that are probably follow others. 
and come up from the mountains. What are the common ones that we're likely to see here today? Oh, you'll see here black-breasted mango, green-breasted mango also. There is the rufous tail hummingbird, tilly vented, white-necked jacobin. Sometimes see the long-billed star throat. The calculations is that we probably are getting between 3,000 and 5,000 birds visiting daily at wow. this point. It's got to be quite dangerous wearing this uh, red shirt, hey, Luis, with all the hummingbirds coming around you? Yeah, the idea is to attract them <laughs> a little closer. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much for, uh, for having you, us. And, and you're very welcome. Hopefully, we'll be able to have a lot of groups coming down here to see more of the birds in Colombia. Great stuff. Thank you so much. Really nice. appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, Luis. Right. This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, your world leader in optics since 1917, and sponsored in part by Columbia, where the only risk is wanting to stay. And sponsored in part by Hobie Polarized Sunglasses, the world's best polarized sunglass. Guiding services provided by Columbia Birdwatch. This Birding from the Edge segment is brought to you by Nikon, manufacturers of the Edge line of optics. There's so many different ways to go birding in Colombia. You can go birding by bus, you can go birding by 4x4 vehicle, you can even go birding by horse. But one of the most ingenious ways to experience the country is to go birding on Chiva. Look at this bus. This is Birding from the Edge. One of the biggest surprises for me in Colombia was the food. Whether you're going to the fanciest restaurants where you can order meat by the meter, or whether you just stop at one of these little roadside stalls, the food is just to die for. What are we having over here, mate? Here we have a small yellow potato that is endemic to Colombia. Oh my gosh. Mm. And this is an empanada, which is oh, filled yeah. with yellow potatoes and meat, and the outer shell is corn, and they're fried. Mm, that is so good. Mucho gracias. Wow. Food in Colombia. You come down for the birds, but you come down for the food too. Mm. Right now we're going to experience something very different, a community-led birding project, which is really, really important for the development of birding in a country like Colombia. How are you doing, mate? My name is James Curry. My name is Thomas. How are you? Very, very good, thanks. So tell me, Christopher, what is this project all about? Uh, this project is a family project. Tomas and his family run it, and it involves teaching the youths of the area to protect the environment and care for the environment in the Farallones mountain range, which is where we are right now. Great stuff. And how far are we from Cali right now? We're about 25 kilometers from Cali. Okay. And some good birds around here? Definitely. Like what? What can we expect to see? Oh, we have uh, mop moths, we have the grayish piculet, apical flycatcher, all sorts of tanagers, so great birding to be done. Okay. If that doesn't call in any birds, I don't know what will. <laughs> Let's move. Come on here. What Tomas has done here is absolutely fascinating. He builds sculptures out of mud and then covers them with moss. The moss grows naturally and you get the end result is this huge landscape and this beautiful landscape, almost like a magical fairyland, covered in moss. And obviously lots of moss, lots of greenery, lots of trees and we're on the slopes of a beautiful mountain here so that means lots of birds too. The work with these young children is done basically so they appreciate the flora and fauna of the Farallones area, which is where we are right now. So today these children are painting birds from the area, which they're going to expose to the public and people from all around the area will come and look at their art and appreciate art and learn to appreciate nature as well. Their goal here is that these children learn to enjoy nature, care for nature, conserve nature, and they also hope that this can be a form of economic incentive for these kids to be able to 
work as artists and make a living doing what they love to do and protecting nature. This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, your world leader in optics since 1917 and sponsored in part by Columbia, where the only risk is wanting to stay. And by Audubon Guides, nature at your fingertips. Guiding services provided by Columbia Birdwatch. This morning we're at Raoul's place at kilometer 18, which is 18 kilometers from Cali. And this is an important bird area. It's a very, very important site. Raoul has a house overlooking pristine primary rainforest here. And let me tell you something. We have right now going on before our eyes, a festival of tanagers at one of his feeders here. There's also hummingbird feeders here, and there's just color everywhere absolutely out of this world got golden tanager coming in here to the feeder blue wing mountain tanager brush tanager right this is just crazy we've been here probably five minutes and we've got nearly 10 species of tanagers already right here at this feeder red-headed bob look at that bird what a stunner oh look at them all coming in now green honey creeper as well in the foreground there ubiquitous black bull thrush of course it just doesn't stop it's just going crazy here looks like christmas has come early this year oh man look at that oh that is spectacular gosh you know i don't know where to look there's hummingbird feeders all around us in the foreground there's a tanager feeder in the background and there's just color everywhere and i don't know where to look because i'm looking at the hummingbird feeders then i'm distracted because there's stuff coming into the tanager feeder you really just got to, got to focus on one place here. You know, Colombia really is a destination where if you want to see hummingbirds and tanagers, this is the country to come and see these families of birds because they're just flocking in here right now. Another golden tanager coming in there to the feeder. Oh, blue wing mountain tanager again. Wow, look at the colors on that bird. And you know something, this is the wonderful thing about Colombia is that right now it's actually pouring with rain. But we're sitting here at Raul's place, we're under a balcony, and the rain doesn't stop the birds. The birds are out there in full force right now, and we're dry. Isn't this absolutely wonderful? Looks like you're going to have to get some more bananas, Raul. They're polishing them off. So what's clearly happening here is that there are times when the feeder is, is vacant. There's no birds at it whatsoever. And what's happening is these mixed flocks of tanagers are coming through in these waves. And every five minutes or so, there'll be like 10 species of tanagers mixed in with red-headed barbets, etc., all at the feeder, and then they'll disappear, move off, and the next wave will come through again. It's just phenomenal stuff. It really is. We're just getting to the end of one of the waves. The last bird has flown off, and sure enough, wait five minutes, and another wave comes through. It's just absolutely amazing. Look at that little wood star. Absolutely fearless. Coming right in. You can hear the wing beats. Almost sound as though it's a little engine. Look at this Jacobin. Hummingbirds are such amazing creatures. So fearless. Look at this. Wow. You can sometimes do nothing but shake your head in wonderment. It's absolutely amazing. Got a little wood star coming in again. Purple throated wood star. Nice male. It's really tough to leave this place, but we have to. We've got to move on. So we've just had such an incredible time here. We've seen golden tanagers, we've seen blue winged mountain tanagers, golden nate tanagers, saffron crown tanagers, scrub tanagers, flame rumped tanagers blue-capped tanagers, red-headed barbets, black-billed thrush, green honey creepers, and blue-gray tanagers, and even palm tanagers, all coming into that feeder. 
and going for the bananas. And then around us, we've just had this plethora of hummingbirds, from long-tailed sylphs to purple-throated wood stars to buff-tailed coronets, even white-necked jacobins and brown violet ears. I mean, it's just been a feast of birding this morning. So Raul, thank you so much for welcoming us in your home. It's been an absolute pleasure. This place is paradise. Muchas gracias y espero que vuelvan pronto por aquí. Muchas gracias. This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, the world leader in optics since 1917, and sponsored in part by Columbia, where the only risk is wanting to stay. And by Coleman, legendary quality innovative camping gear. And by Wingscapes, manufacturers of the Bird Cam. The valley behind me is called the Coca Valley, and this is situated between the Western Andes and the Central Andes. And in particular, the water behind me is from the Sonsa Lagoon, a floodplain of the Coca River. This is one of the last pristine wetlands in the Coca region of Colombia. So I'm here at one of the Oxbow Lakes of the Sonso Lagoon. I'm here with Chris and Jose from Columbia Birdwatch. We're going in quest of a very, very unique woodpecker called the greyish piculette. They normally live in fairly dry forest. This Sonso Lagoon has flooded. It's the floodplain of the Coco River and it's basically flooded its banks right out onto the open here. So we're looking for greyish piculette in pretty atypical habitat wading through this grassland. This should be exciting though. Let's go birding. Colombia is a land of many seasons and when you come down to Colombia you might come during the two dry seasons or during the two wet seasons. This area behind me here in the dry season is bone dry. There's not an ounce of water here but right now it's totally flooded. The Coco River has flooded its banks and this is what makes up the Sonso Lagoon behind me. Sonso Lagoon is such a spectacular birding location on our quest for greyish piculette we're not only coming across specialities like greyish piculette, but we're also seeing some more common water birds of the area, some spectacular species like ringed kingfishers, we've seen blue-headed parrot here, bare-faced ibis, purple gallinules. I mean, the list just goes on. Sonso Lagoon is a haven for bird life, and it's very, very close to a bustling urban metropolis of Buga. There's a female snail kite perched behind me doing this very strange display. She's doing this sort of cackling call and opening up her wings. It looks like it's some kind of breeding signal or breeding display. And she's just sitting there right in the open here in the Sonso Lagoon doing this display. Well, look, she's just flown off now, just flown off to the right. And she's just swooped down and got an apple snail. You can see right next to me over here is exactly what snail kites feed on. These little eggs here just pull this up on this water hyacinth. These are the eggs of the apple snail and they'll come up and they'll lay these eggs and obviously the water levels are very important for snail kites because they need to be able to be able to get at these apple snails so if the water levels are too high or too low the snails are going to be either too low or too high so they're going to struggle to catch them. We've got the male in a tree here too. The male's right next to a nest this is what this display is. We've got the male at the top of the tree doing the same display, kind of doing that kind of noise and then opening his wings like that. And this seems to be a mating display that these two birds are doing. They've got a nest right next to them. This might be the display that they do prior to actually laying their eggs. Wow, beautiful pair of snail kites right here in the Sonsa Lagoon. getting great views of one of the smallest woodpeckers in the world, greyish piculette. This is our golden bird for this episode. And look at the size of this little woodpecker. 
probably the size of a sparrow. I mean, it's this big and it's a woodpecker. So on this trip, we've had woodpeckers from the Campophilus genus, the largest family of woodpeckers in the world in terms of size. And then we've got the Piculettes, the smallest woodpeckers in the world. Such a variety in size and woodpeckers here in Colombia. Wow. Look at this little guy sitting on the branch here, right in the open. They've got this very, very high pitched call, which is very distinctive and is key to finding this little species. But wow, is this an unlikely sight? Here we are looking for grayish piculette, which really is a dry forest bird. But here we are looking for it in waders. Yes, grayish piculette, right here in the Sonso Lagoon in Colombia. Wonderful stuff.